Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Jane McCarthy. We've been following the evolution of the Sandpoint Company Solar Roadway since before the local inventor even had a prototype. Well, today Solar Roadways made it into the championship round of a contest for the CBS show Innovation Nation with Mo Rocca. The competition pits the show's favorite innovations against each other in a single elimination competition. The idea is that energy from those solar roads could eventually course into the world's power grid. I just checked in with the Sandpoint couple and found they're on the brink of a significant milestone. It's the fiery ball fueling life. NASA estimates you'd have to explode 100 billion tons of dynamite every second of every day to match the energy produced by the sun. This has a rubber boot on the bottom of it. And Scott Brusa wants a piece of that. In a nutshell, to save the planet, to cut down or eliminate greenhouse gases. Brusa estimates if we use solar panels to cover 48,000 square miles of paved surfaces in the lower 48 states, we produce three times more power than this nation uses. And you could do that globally. But how exactly do you do that? So this is Julie preparing solar cells for the solar road panels. Scott and his wife Julie have spent just about every day over the past 10 years working to answer that question while developing solar roadways. No pressure. No. <laughs> they don't need to sleep anyways. Perhaps it's a mix of sleep deprivation and passion that helped get solar roadways to today's yeah. monumental leap. We've signed with our first manufacturing contract in Dayton, Ohio. So they'll be making the first SR4s. And we're in talks with another manufacturing company here in North Idaho. That means we can get the price way down. And our ultimate goal is to have this at a big box store where homeowners can do their driveways, um, business people can do their parking lots. That kind of availability is still down the road, so to speak. But really appreciating this mile marker requires a look in the rearview mirror. Krem 2 first met Scott in 2009 when his solar roadways idea was no more than a concept on a computer. He got the attention of the U.S. Department of Transportation, who gave solar roadways a $100,000 small business innovative research grant. Instead of writing a research paper, Scott pounded out a prototype. We built that 12 foot by 12 foot model. And it was really just a proof of concept that we would actually do something like that. Is that the one I saw in your garage? So I'll take one apart and show you. Yes, yes. All those years ago. That was SR1. This is the first solar parking lot. Ever. <laughs> Ever. They installed SR2 outside their home a few years ago. The more money we can raise, the sooner our product will be available. The Brusas got to the next phase with the help of a record-setting crowdfunding campaign back in 2014. It raised more than $2.2 million. After Indiegogo, credit card, and other fees, the Brusas say they got about $1.5 million before the tax man took another huge chunk. We're being very careful with it. You know, we're, we're doing, we're kind of stretching as far as we can. That allowed them to buy a Sandpoint building to serve as the Solar Roadways Research and Development Headquarters. They hired a few employees and bought their first small-scale manufacturing equipment. Of course, they weren't actually made to make solar roads. Nobody ever needed machines for that before. So one of the biggest uh, things I learned was machines break. It was a sometimes painful process getting to SR3. This is Jeff Jones Square. The first Square public town. test project uh, so was installed in Sandpoint in 2016. Well, do you see imperfection because of oh, who yeah. you are? Yeah. <laughs> he also sees success and a lot of knowledge. After fixing some panels that blinked out, they found the energy generation and metering is falling short. The next phase has a fix. We get viewers who say, it's not, they're not melting the snow, they're not working at Jeff Jones Square. So we learned some pretty scientific stuff about snowfall. They've learned they'll need to distribute power around the new panels to get more even snow melt. And the metal tracks between these panels aren't heated, so when the heaters melted the snow, the water would pool and freeze. So you could actually have a sheet of ice going all the way across the panel without actually touching it. There's a fix in SR4. Like this one shipped a little bit. These will prevent that. That's the nice thing about the pilot project, that it was there to learn what's wrong with it. We did. We've made improvements. We've made some corrections. SR4 will show that. Scott knows while millions of people are cheering them on, there are also those criticizing the project every inch of the way. It's just one more way Solar Roadways veers off the beaten path compared to other companies. You don't bring the whole world along on the journey. We did the opposite way. 
we were bringing the world along before we ever put two resistors together. So that works for and against us sometimes, but I'm glad we did it that way. This engineer likes to think of any criticism in terms of the Wright brothers' first historic flight. If some of those guys had been around when the Wright brothers were trying to fly, they, they just said, only let this last 12 seconds, epic failure, that's debunked, it'll never happen. Same thing with the first automobile, everything. So will SR4 be perfect? An engineer will never say it's good enough. I'll find ways of making it better and I'll be looking forward to SR5. If you still can't imagine driving over solar roadways, that's okay. Scott says it's closer than ever, and it's his job to keep working away until the road of sunshine unfolds before us. So the Broussas hope to one day have manufacturing facilities everywhere so they can make this technology more accessible and cost effective. And you were telling me one of the barriers is the high cost. That's right, because that's why mass production is so important, because right now each panel is basically made by hand mm -hmm. and they cost about $2,000 each. So in research and development, that becomes very costly every time mm -hmm. they have to scrap one of those panels. So, but that's what they need to do, right? to right. improve things so once they get them going improved and on a much bigger scale in terms of production then the cost comes way down and it doesn't happen overnight right these are incremental changes to get to where they want to go right and he made the the point there to me in the interview that you know people go through all this and then unveil a product right he's done it opposite because they also needed public support mm -hmm. and funding. Well, so. it's a fantastic idea. So looking to forward to seeing where it goes. Yeah. And by the way, we want you to weigh in on solar roadways and when you think we could see them in widespread use. So go to Krem 2's mobile app and click on the vote tab or go to krem.com slash vote. So this vote is a gauge. So you just slide it to the left or the right, depending on how long you think it could be. If ever, mm -hmm. there's that option too. We'll break down the results in just a few minutes.